Hey guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. So I'm just going to be uh, talking about all the books that I have on my bookshelf, which ones I've read, which ones I haven't read, which ones I love. You will probably notice that I am in a completely different setting than my last video and that is because I have recently moved back to my college town because classes are starting soon so I'm in my new room I have some of my plants over here my bed and then my bookshelf is right back there so we're gonna go back there and start looking at the books so yeah all right so starting with the very top shelf of my bookshelf and if you're wondering this is my whole bookshelf it's uh, six feet tall and as you can see it's pretty full and I organize my books um, alphabetically. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I do because I'm kind of a control freak, so I like to have things in alphabetical order, especially my books. So I have them alphabetical by author, and then within the same author, I have them alphabetical by title. So let's just start at the beginning. First book I have is Americana. If you watched my last video, you know I just did a review of this one. The next few books I have are all by Mitch Album. My favorite book of all time is right here. That's The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom. And I really like this author, but that's by far my favorite book of his. And I have Disobedience by Naomi Alderman, which is one of my all-time favorites as well. I've read that this year. The next books that I have are by Margaret Atwood. So here I have um, Alias Grace, Cat's Eye, and The Handmaid's Tale. And I've read The Handmaid's Tale and Cat's Eye. I have yet to read Alias Grace, but I just pur purchased it recently because I wanted to uh, read more books by Margaret Atwood because I really enjoyed uh, Cat's Eye. So, Next couple books we have are by uh, Frederick Bachman. That's A Man Called Ove and My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. Then I have Fun Home by Alison Bechtel, which if you don't know is like a um, comic. Then I have A Long Way Home by Sarah Brierley, and then right here in the middle if you can see I have uh, what we talk about when we talk about love by Raymond Carver, which is um, a bunch of short stories by Raymond Carver, which is really good. And then I have Graceling by Christian Cashor, and I really, really love this book. It was one of my favorite books as a kid, and I actually had um, Fire as well before, but if you don't know, uh, my family's house burned down about a year ago in the Northern California fire, so all the books you see here are books that I used to own, and then they burned in the fire and my friends, some of my amazing friends here at school worked hard to replace them. So a lot of them are books that I received from my friends. Some are books that I bought myself. But yeah, so I used to have Fire as well as Graceling, but right now I just have Graceling. And then I have this book, which I have not read yet, which is My Life in France by Julia Child. And then if you can kind of see in there, I have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie tucked away. Then I have What Happened by Hillary Rodham Clinton. And then the next three are all by Juno Diaz, who I think is a very good writer. So I have The Brief Wonder's Life of Oscar Wilde, Drown, and This Is How You Lose Her. The next two books are by Anthony Dover. Um, one is very popular, All the Light We Cannot See. And then this one is called About Grace. Then I have Room, which I just got today, actually. My friend gave it to me because I read it on my Kindle and I really wanted to have the physical copy. So my friend gave me one. So thank you, Hannah, for that. And then I have Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. And then I have my Jillian Flynn collection. So I have every novel written by Jillian Flynn. So I have Dark Places, Gone Girl, and Sharp Objects. Then I have two Jonathan Safran Foer books, Everything is Illuminated, which I haven't read yet, and then Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which is very good. My favorite book by him is actually Here I Am, which I read on my Kindle. I don't have it on my bookshelf, but it is one, one of my all-time favorite books, so you guys should definitely check that out if you like his writing style. Moving on to the second shelf. First book I have is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. Pretty good book. It's about a girl who's raised alongside a monkey. And then I have Bad Feminist, which is a collection of essays by Roxane Gay. I haven't read this one yet because I just bought it, but I'm very excited to read it because I'm a big fan of Roxane Gay. And then I have Zodiac, a uh, big fan of true crime, so I really enjoyed that book and the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, then I have Mrs. Kimball by Jennifer High, which is a book that I read this year because someone gave it to me. Someone gave me that book. I actually really enjoyed it. It was very interesting, so you should check it out. I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. 
And then I have Red Dragon by Thomas Harris, which I just read. I don't own The Silence of the Lambs because my friend lent it to me, but I'm looking for a copy of that book right now because it was really good. So I'm trying to find that. And then I have The Odyssey by Homer, which is my favorite epic play. Uh, I have The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. I have The Resurrectionist. And then tucked in there, I have... Uh, the Cider House Rules by John Irving, which I haven't read yet because I just picked it up and I lent it to my dad as soon as I got it, but I've heard it's really good, so I'm excited to read it. Then I have The 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared. Uh, this is an old favorite of mine. I read it about three years ago and I absolutely loved it, but I didn't own it because someone lent it to me and then I bought it, so yay. Then I have two Mindy Kaling books. Um, I'm a big fan of memoirs and sort of creative nonfiction. So I really enjoyed both these books. They're both memoirs. Uh, then I have Girl Interrupted. After that, I have my Stephen King collection. So this is one of the only sections that's not in alphabetical order by title because I have all my big Stephen King books together. So the first one I have, 11, 22, 63. And then I have the Bachman books, which are the books that Stephen King wrote under a pseudonym. So let me see if it says which ones. It has Rage, The Long Walk, Roadwork, and The Running Man. So far I've read Rage and The Long Walk. I haven't read the other two, so I'm excited to read those. And then I have It, which I've read. Stephen King on writing. And then I have Carrie, Dolores Claiborne, another copy of The Long Walk because this is the actual copy that I used to own before the fire and I wanted to get the exact copy. And I have The Stand, which I haven't read yet. It's his... It's either his longest book or one of his longest books. It's about 1,200 pages or something crazy like that. And then I have a short story collection called Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I haven't finished that one yet, but I've read a couple short stories. They're pretty good. So down to the third shelf. Um, first one we have is Deep Dark Fears, which if you haven't heard of this, it's, um, it's an illustrated book. So it has illustrations in it, obviously and they're just kind of like these little comics that people make about their fears and my mom bought this for me because um as a child i was very anxious and i had a lot of strange fears like that so she thought i would relate to it and not surprisingly i did relate to it a lot so thanks mom um next book i have is the history of love by nicole nicole kraus which is a really good book um, I don't really remember it that well because I read it a while ago. I remember that I loved it, so it's very good. Check it out. Then I have Last Train to Istanbul by AC Colin, I think. I haven't finished that one yet, but I've I have a tab sort of in the top if you can see it. So I'm about a quarter of the way through. Uh, then I have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo um, original trilogy by Stieg Larsson. Love that trilogy, absolute fave. Um, I have To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Then I have The Hundred Foot Journey. Um, I haven't read that one yet, but I've seen the movie and I really liked it. I got that at a local bookstore and it was like a one of those blind date with the books things. And I thought that was really cute. I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. And then I have two books by Leanne Moyarty. I have Big Little Lies and What Alice Forgot. Next book is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole, which was another fantasy series I really loved as a kid. I only have the first book, but I used to own, um, I think the whole series or almost the whole series, so yeah. Then I have The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, which was one of the, my favorite books I ever read in class, so that was a good one. I read it in high school twice, actually, for two different classes, and it was really good. Then I have 1984 by George Orwell, Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. And then my entire collection of Jodi Picoult novels. So Jodi Picoult was my favorite um, adult author when I was um, growing up. So when I was like a teenager, first started getting into adult novels, I started reading Jodi Picoult books and I read almost every single one. So I have, um, I think I have all the ones that I read, but I almost do. My favorite one, if anyone cares, is called Handle With Care. It's, in my opinion, her best book. It's very good, and if you want to start reading her books because she has so many, you should read that one. They're realistic fiction, and most of the time they have, they're full of, like, moral dilemmas and problems, so those are really good. And then I have Ticket Home by James Michael Pratt. I haven't read that yet, but someone gave it to me, so I hopefully will get to read it soon. I'm not even quite sure what it's about, but 
we'll see. Then I have Julie and Julia by Julie Powell, one of my favorite books and movies of all time, so that one's really good. Next I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I read the first book when I was a teenager and I really enjoyed it. By the time the sequel came out I felt that I had outgrown the series so I only read the first one but I did really like it so yeah. Then I have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I used to have an entire collection of her books um, but this is my all-time favorite so I'm glad that I have this one. I don't know if I really want to repurchase the whole collection because I, this is the only one that I really love. Next I have my Harry Potter books. As you can tell these first three were um, donated to me. They are used, so someone took these off their shelf and donated them to me after the fire, so that was really nice of them. And then, oh, I, sorry, I have number four in the wrong place, but anyways, the next four are, um, one of them I got as a gift from a friend, so I think that was this one. She sent it to me new, and then the rest I um, ended up buying myself. So yeah, and then I have um, Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Lewis Satchar. That was just kind of a fun book that I read as a kid and I really enjoyed it. And so I repurchased it just a little while ago because I thought the stories were so weird and funny. So I have that. Then I have The Catcher in the Ride by J.D. Salinger. Uh, that book was okay, not my favorite. Then I have The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. Really good book, I love that. And I have The Bookseller of Kabul by Asni Seierstad. I read that one because someone donated it to me. It was a good book and it wasn't one that I think I ever would have picked out myself, so I'm glad that someone sent it to me. And then I have The Art of Hearing Heartbeats by Jan Philip Sendker. So I had this one on my bookshelf at home for years and I never read it because I thought it didn't sound interesting. Um, when I lost all my books in the fire, someone sent it to me and I was like, I should probably actually read this now. So I did and I actually really loved it. So next on the final shelf, I have my a series of unfortunate events books. I have the entire series, which I purchased on Amazon because I wanted to have every single one. I have them all in hardback. Uh, this was my all-time favorite series as a child, so it means a lot to me and I really wanted to have it going forward. Next I have Stargirl and Love Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. I love these books so much as a child. Then I have The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman, uh, The Winter of Our Discontent by John Steinbeck, which is right there, which I haven't read yet, but I've heard that it's good, so I'm gonna try to read it. And then I have um, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini, which is one of my all-time favorite books. Then I have this big book, which has three separate books by Kurt Vonnegut. I've read Cat's Cradle and Slaughterhouse Five. I haven't read God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater, so I'm going to try to read that soon. Uh, that one's a little messed up up here, but it's still good. Then I have The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. A friend um, loaned this to me a little while ago, and I read it, and I loved it, so I bought it for myself in a used bookstore. Then I have Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, which if you don't know is a book that the movie The Handmaiden is based off of. Um, and I love the movie so much so I decided to buy the book. I haven't read it yet, but I bought it this summer, so hopefully I'll get around to reading it soon. And um, then I have The Martian by Andy Weir. Andy Weir. This is one of my all-time favorite books also. Um, it's so good. It's probably the best science fiction book I've ever read. And then I have The Once and Future King by T.H. White, which is a book I read in high school, and it was so lengthy and kind of boring, so I wanted to have it just because I wanted to prove to people that I had read it. And then the last book on my shelf is The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, which I read this year, and I really enjoyed it. The only book I own that is not currently on my shelf is uh, Goodbye Columbus by Philip Roth. I'm still reading this one, even though it's so short. This past week moving in has been very crazy and difficult and long, so I'm about halfway through, but so far it's really good, so I'll probably post a review to this one soon. So that's it for my bookshelf tour. If you liked it, uh, like and subscribe, comment, whatever. Tell me what you want me to do next. Looking for ideas, so if you like this video, let me know and let me know what you want to see next. Uh, until then, bye and thanks for watching.